Assalamualaikum and greetings everyone. In this chapter, we will discuss about the plane thrusters problem. We wish to use finite element method for solving the following thrusters problem. In the first example, we have four members of thrusters problem, where in the second example, we have three members thrusters problem. Unlike in 1D bar problem, where we only have one displacement only either in x or in y direction but in the thrusters problem the displacement could occur in both direction x and y what is the thrust structure a truss is a static structure consisting of straight slender members interconnected at joints to form triangular units in general the characteristic of a plane truss is it is comprises of two force member and it is connected by a frictionless joint. Beside that, all loads and reaction forces are applied at the joints only as shown in this figure. As I mentioned before, in the plane truss problem, there are two displacement components at each node. And in this case, we use the notation U and V, where U is to represent the displacement in X direction, while V to represent the displacement in Y direction. Moreover, only tension or compression can be experienced by the truss member. We would like to discuss about the elements difference metric for a plate truss member. But before that, we have to understand first the displacement transformation in a plane truss member. Imagine we have this one truss member denoted by node 1 and node 2. And when we apply a load to this member, it will shift it to a new position. And node 1 has shifted in x direction by u1 the same thing also occur at node 2 where it shifted in x direction by u2 as we can see at the same time node 1 or node 2 also have shifted in y direction by v1 and v2 between the truss member and the line of u1 we have the theta here and if we resolve the u1 line towards this truss member we will have u1 cos theta the same thing also happen for v1 line where we also have theta here and if we resolve this one, you also can have V1 sine theta in the same direction as the truss member. And if we bring this to the truss member, so we will have a total displacement for node 1 is given by U1 prime. This U1 prime is actually the axial displacement of node 1 as defined u1 prime equal to u1 cos theta plus v1 sine theta the same thing also happen at node 2 if we derive the transformation displacement for node 2 where we also can define the axial displacement for not 2 is u2 prime equal to u2 cos theta plus v2 sine theta to make it easier our equations let's say cos theta is c and sine theta we give a notation s c and s c for cos s for sine and if we transform these two equation into a metric form we will have the axial displacement is equal to matrix l 
times u, where matrix L is a rectangular matrix called the transformation matrix. Similarly to 1D bar problem, we will derive the element stiffness metric for plane truss member by using the internal strain energy. Recall that for 1D bar element, we have defined the internal energy is given by this equation, where the displacement here and here is actually the axial displacement in bar element. While for the plane thrust member we have defined just now, the axial displacement is given by matrix L times U. When we replace this equation to this U, we will have a new internal strain energy for a plane thrust member. And then by replacing this L and U into this equation, we will have this arrangement and when we remove this bracket and remember when we have a transpose in this outside the bracket we have to change the position of this metric so that we will have this kind of arrangement so now let's remember the internal strain energy that we have defined in bar elements. So we have defined in the previous chapter the internal energy is given by half u k u. And if we compare between these two equations, we can summarize that the k is this equation. Once we have defined the K matrix, the next step is to solve this equation by replacing the matrix L into this equation. We have defined the matrix L is given by this equation. By replacing this matrix L into our K matrix, we will have this arrangement. Please take note that when we have a transpose matrix, we have to change the row become column. When we solve this operation, then we will have our K matrix for a plane truss member. Please take note that in this K matrix, we have a 4 times 4 matrix instead of 2 times 2 matrix for bar element. This 4 times 4 matrix is to represent the displacement U1, V1, U2, V2. In this slide, we will discuss the element strain and stress for a plane truss member. Remember, for a bar element, we have defined in the previous chapter, the strain is equal to matrix B times matrix U where this matrix U is actually the axial displacement and matrix B is given by this equation which has also been defined in the previous chapter. Similarly, for a plane thrust member, the strain is also defined as matrix B times the axial displacement. We has also defined the Axial displacement for a truss member is given by this equation, matrix L times U. Next, by replacing this equation into our strain equation and we expand it, we will have this arrangement. By solving this operation, next we will obtain our strain equation for a plane thrust member. Why for element stress, we are still following the Hooke's law where the strain is defined by the modulus of elasticity times the strain. So, our strain equation for a plane thrust member just need to multiply with E as shown in this equation where we have 
E here. Okay, that's, that's the only difference between the stress equation with the strain equation. For strain equation, we have 1. For stress equation, we have E. 